First of all, I'm happy to be here. I'm excited to be here. I wanted to come on here for, ooh. Yeah, wow. Since March. Oh, wow. Yeah. We had talked about it for, I mean, at least at least since the beginning of this year, as far as just hop on a podcast, talking about sports, talking about, you know, some of the things you did to get to the point where you're at. So, uh, but yeah. yeah, man, appreciate you hopping on. And and you're right you're in Texas right now, right? Yeah, I'm in Houston right now. I'm in H-Town. I'm holding it down in H-Town for anybody that need to know that. <laughs> man, it's in H-Town. James Hardenville. James yeah, Hardenville. you know, J- James Harden just had a big weekend out here in H-Town. Like, uh, I want to say two to three weeks ago, it was major. H-Town yeah. was moving. Yeah, we saw, we saw, we saw. Yeah, 50, 50 Cent did some big things out here, too. I, lo- I like H-Town, man. That's what's up. Yeah, so, um, but you're training out there, right? Um, started in VA, went to AZ, and you're training out there. Um, before we get started, just introduce yourself and then tell us a little bit about how you got in Texas, uh, to Texas, and training and whatnot. Um, Dante Davis. Uh, a lot of the people on here know me as Chop in the Field. Chop. Um, man, I, I I started my training in VA, like you said. I'm from the area, from the Northern Virginia, D.C. area. Um. I was running it up crazy, I would say, like in 2015, 16, 17, in the D.C. area, in the Virginia area. And um, I had a good group of boys more than anything. That's what uh, that's what I think that's what got me noticed, man. I had a good group of guys more than anything. They were they stuck to it. They listened and they were very coachable. Yeah. Um, then uh, after V.A., I rolled to to Arizona and I told everybody i say i gotta step it up a notch and from there it went up man it went up uh arizona i was training a lot of a lot of guys college guys a lot of pro guys a lot of guys you guys see playing on sunday um a lot of guys that you see playing on saturday that's balling yeah um throughout the acc big east a lot of conferences to conferences. that to that point yeah so um to that point and I'll, I'll talk about how we met and then i'll talk about i, I want i want to get to that point um, but for me personally, when I, when I, you know, football was over for me, I still had the itch. I still wanted to compete at some sort. I didn't want to necessarily yeah. put the pads on, but I wanted to compete at some sort. Um, the X's and O's is something that's still kind of engraved in me. When I kind of, I moved out to this Northern Virginia area back in like, you know, when I was started, and I've been, been in the area after college, but um, when I really started looking at, you know, where can I kind of get that fix of just being able to compete at that level, I yeah. searched everywhere. I went to, you know, different trainers, different communities. And the only person that was really training at, at the level that I wanted to compete at was Dante. So mm. I reached out to and him. And I appreciate it. Yeah. And, and to be honest with you, there was no one, there was no one who was doing what you were doing um, that first A was competing at that level. Because a lot of those high school guys, you know, they were, they were, you know, they were dolls. You know what I'm saying? And I was competing yeah. with them and they're giving me work, you know, per usual. And, um, but a lot of the high school guys, uh, that the, you, you, I'll open up the, the, the window and the doors for me to train with you. There wasn't like, Hey, you had to do this. You had to do this. You had to be, it was, there was no judgment. Yeah. It wasn't like, Hey, look, you, where do you play at? Oh, okay. I can't train with you. Or what, how much money sent it? It wasn't can't playing with you. Of course I was like, Hey, look, I can record some of the workouts, you know, this was back in 2017, 2018. If I yep. can train with you. And he was like, what's up? So that's kind of how we got connected. But um, you, most of the guys out of Virginia were, most of the guys you're training at Virginia were like in high school. There's some pro guys, college guys. But then when you shifted to Arizona, the whole, I guess the whole uh, different type of people you were training changed, right? Yeah, a lot of the dynamic change uh, for chopping the field as a company itself. You know, um, being that Arizona is such a hotbed, Mm-hmm. for for athletes pro pro athletes in particular they they were uh getting around me they 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 were in different environments to see me coach and maybe if it was just one or two times they were like you know what I need to train with this guy um so moving to Arizona definitely I could say it was like a trampoline boost for chopping the field yeah uh it was a lot more pro pro nfl guys a lot of more uh college guys that were elite level um and it was cool too because i got the setup out there i got you know i got uh i got the fields out there i had the weight room out there as well uh 
with uh, East Valley CrossFit and my boy August. August Schmidt looks out for all the athletes. Um, but yeah. uh, athletes, it was, I saw athletes consistently coming in, and it was never it was never a break. You know, it was never a break. Right. There was always an athlete kind of popping in there, athlete or two popping in there, and you always, you know, you, the the facility is being used, but the clientele also too was kind of like at the collegiate and pro level. Yeah, and it was a good environment. Like, man, we had pro guys coming in to work out mm -hmm. um, with college dudes lifting. Like, pfft, I didn't get this type of lift since I was in college. Like, I love working out with these college boys because they go hard. Yeah. You know? And that's the type of environment that uh, that all the guys are training in. It's like, yo, let's let's really match the gas. Let's really – let's apply some real pressure, and let's work hard as, hard as hell. You know what I mean? Let's now, work hard as hell. The – the benefit, I think one of the benefits of that is um, being a part of a team, they have this kind of universal training where a strength and, strength and conditioning coach is training for a whole team as opposed to individually one person. Yeah. You, you can focus your time on them. And then now why the move to Houston, Texas, right? Oh, uh, man. The move, house the out move. there as well, too, right? It's just a background. You said what? You just bought a house out there, too, as the background as well. Right. Oh yeah, there you go. You know, man, I'm at the compound right now, fellas. Um, this man said yeah. compound. Yeah, I'm at the compound, baby. That's why I had to stand outside. I said I ain't getting in no room and, right. and talking on Zoom. Nah, I'm good. Come see this house. Right, right. Uh, nah, Houston, Houston. Uh, we made this. We made this move. I mean, Texas is the mecca for football, man. Yeah. I mean, and if you put me in that environment in that type of situation. I'm going to thrive. Athletes are going to thrive. Chopping the field is going to thrive. Um, so it's like a win, win, win for everybody. Yeah. Uh, and, and and shoot, I feel like Houston is a great spot. The talent down here is exceptional, mm -hmm. and is it's not a shortage of athletes out here. Right. You know, it's not a short. It's not a shortage of, of good ass athletes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. D different, oh, this, market, you know, different market, but also, you know, as far as being able to reach high school, co collegiate, and pro guys going to Texas, is, yeah. Houston is a good place to, you know, to train and whatnot. Oh Let man, me, it's some, some high, you gotta understand, this is Texas football. So, like, some of these yeah, athletes yeah, out here yeah, that's in, yeah. like, some of these high school athletes that's very popular in Texas mm -hmm. are more known than guys on the Houston Texans. Wow. Yeah. In the community, right? Like, so, you know, so that's it's big time out here. Uh, and, but the Houston move has been great, man. Like, I, I have guys on the Texans that I work with. My man Steve Nelson has been balling. Yeah, for, former Eagle. So, you know, we, we love hey. Nelson, former Eagle, you know. You, Steve taking the love, baby. You know what I mean? Steve yeah, taking yeah. the love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, I watched him. I was kind of kind of upset that we, you know, we didn't retain him. I think he's a smart player, you know, and he would have meshed well with the team we have now. But you, you said Steve Nelson is one guy you work with out, out there with the Houston Texans. Yeah, and then uh, a couple yeah. boys over at U of H, and um, uh, but me and Steve have been going hard out here, even this summertime, man. Me and Steve, we we matched the gas. Steve is in some of the best shape of his career, mm -hmm. even since when he got into the NFL. Yeah, I mean he's been doing things in camp through all throughout camp, as far as making plays, making interceptions, coming in, running some of the top uh uh mile per hour speed on days at workouts for the whole team. Um, yeah. He's in, he's in good shape. He's going to make some real noise this year. Yeah. He's going to make some real noise. Yeah, I believe so. Now, when you, when you uh, play at Syracuse, right? Yep. Try, try, truck as well. You play at Syracuse, right? What was the, I guess the, like the FedEx truck to go by. When you, you left, when you left Syracuse, what, what 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 you say? I want to go to training. What what was your motivation to go? Because this this training is a business that a lot of people don't make it in. You know, a lot of people don't yeah. make it in this space. What was the factor to say? Hey, look, I I want to do this, and I'm good at it, or I have I can provide value. What what was that the, that conversation with yourself like? Well, more so than training, mm -hmm. it was about coaching, right? Uh -huh. So so for me, when I was even at Syracuse, I would coached the other receivers that was younger than me or even my age, like uh, even my man, Mike Williams. 
Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. my age. He came in with me. Mike Williams ended up getting drafted to to the Bucks. Right. Was ranked one of the top 100 players in the NFL. Yeah. But when we were, came into Syracuse together, he was like, man, you run routes at a level that I, I need to learn. Yeah, I actually saw, I actually, uh, saw a clip, did some yeah. digging, where you went against Revis. You know, shout out to Revis, you know, but you went, you went, yeah. went against Revis. And, you know, in a, in, a, in a game and, you know, you know, you, you, you call a couple passes on him, right? I think it was one, I saw one pass the out route, you know, yeah. but he's, you know, bet one of the best in the game, you know? So. Oh man. um, And that's what I tell a lot of these boys about the route running that I'm teaching. Like I went against dudes that, that were dogs and still known as dogs. Right. Um, And Revis, the battles were great. I mean, uh, him and I talked, recently uh through through instagram and he said he loved competing with me man um mm-hmm. and and i remember that pittsburgh game i went out there and gave boys six six catches for like 60 something right yeah <laughs> and but revis was a dog i was a true freshman yeah that's true you know and he was and he was about to get drafted and, and, they, uh, they, moved, they moved you around a lot too you yeah, know they moved me around a lot they, they seen the athlete in me so mm-hmm. i was i was very been uh it was i was very grateful that that uh my coaches understood my talents and how to get me in different positions and it benefited the team well too. So now you, so when you left, it was more like coaching. How'd you build your clientele in Virginia? Oh, how'd you, how'd you build like you said, you're from Virginia. How'd you build? I mean, you know, you had a name, you know, but how'd you start building out the athletes saying, Hey, look, I want to chain with y'all. Cause that's all oh. I, I want to chain with y'all. Bro, you know, it, it really started with just a group of core boys that I coached in high school, right? Yeah. And my boys that I that I coached in high school trained with me in the off season, and they got so good and started making so much noise in the whole state of Virginia. They were getting offers. They was, you know, what I mean, they was getting offers to top ACC schools, top SEC schools. They were showing up at these Nike openings and under Under Armour events being some of the top prospects and and that's that's the buzz that went around in the area man the DMV caught wave and and I give it up to our neighborhoods man I give it up to our area like when they see somebody doing something they like to the support right and and the community supported me and I looked out for them in, in two tenfold yeah. you like you know what I mean I was making sure like my boys I treated like they was my kids yeah and you were tough I on them too you were tough on them I'm tough as shit on them. I'm tough as shit on them. And, and their parents love that, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm not tough on them like, yo, I want to be a tough guy. I'm on. I'm tough when you do things that need to be, you know what I mean? Something right. said about, and or I need to need to be tough on you. But uh, Virginia was great. Uh, I started with that core boys. And, and yeah, it was that who, I mean, I, I, there's some there's some guys that I went up against that were just like, and I just watching them, um, uh, Justice Ellis, Justice Ellison at at Wake Forest. Yep, bro, that, was that a... kid, that, that kid is tough. That, that kid, that, he's tough. And then even uh, Alex Richards, um, what's yep. his name? Ivy, I think. What's his name? Uh, the guy went and played at Rhode Island. Um, I, yeah, yeah, he's tough too. I mean, some of these guys, you know, Ivory. Yeah, he, they, they, you know, it, it's like you, you, you see co- collegiate and pro talent, and you like these guys are not too far from that. When it comes to understanding right. the game, you know, so. Right. And, and there you go. That's the best thing that I think um, I was getting across to my athletes more than a lot of uh, trainers. It's like the knowledge of the football game. Mm-hmm. So it's, it was very easy for them to excel at a high school level because they literally was out there outthinking dudes. Not only was they outthinking dudes, they was already more athletic than them because right. they was working with me. Yeah. No. Yeah, I mean- and. Go, go ahead. And, no, I was like, I was gonna say because they was working with me, and you know, we was we was we was building dogs back when they was in <laughs> freshman in high school, baby. Yeah, it, it start, started the freshman level, and it was it was it was like well, I think when we talk about training, like there's a lot of people that you can get a trainer, and a lot of the stuff you see on social media can be replicated. You know, people doing drills yeah. and stuff like that. But one thing that I think stood out. Uh, for you was you were teaching them the the game from a practical and conceptual point, right? You're, you're teaching them, Hey, look, you know, here are different ways to run a slant, right? Yeah. Here, here's how you get out your break. You know, here's what, here's how you run a curl and slide, you know, versus zone zone versus man. 
Um, you know, what to think about running a comeback in a post. So a lot of yeah. what you did translated on, on training translate to the field. Is mm. that something you say kind of sets you apart from like other different trainers, other different coaches who really kind of spend time to develop, help develop these athletes? Uh, most definitely, because I'm not just setting, you know, I'm not, you know how I get down, man. I'm not going out here just setting up some cones and be like, yo, run around, run around, run around. Right. It's like, what can we do out here on a consistent basis that's going to be like mimicking literally the game-like situation? Yeah. And I think of things like accordingly and, and we create workouts accordingly. You know what I yeah. mean? And um, that, that, when I see a lot of, I don't want to, one, I don't even look at a lot of trainers. You know how I get down, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I stay in my bubble. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's but hard when to I see do though, see... on social media. It's hard to see on social media. And every, listen, every if you're putting, if outside trainers, if you're putting in work, you know, good for them. But, uh, you know, for me, like, I, when, I see, when I see someone training someone, I look at what's what's the value of, like, can I do this on my own? Can yeah. I, something I can do on my own. Um, I'm not going to pay somebody if I'm setting up cones and, and just doing X, Y, Z, I, I can do it on my own. Unless I am, I, I, I'm not paying for motivation, but conceptually yeah. the game, if there was a, there was, you know, cause I, you know, I played receiver in college and, and when I was out there with you, I was actually learning things. I never, even, I was never even taught in college, you know, right. you know, I was and, 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 and of course you have certain systems, but general knowledge, certain, certain things as far as, you know, like how to run a curl route was, was big, you know, like how to slide versus the curl. They didn't teach us that in college. You know? Or just different releases. Like I remember different you told releases. me. Yep. Yeah, you told me straight up, like, man, you break down the footwork so simple on right. a, on a on a level that you can understand it far as yeah. uh how a receiver should release. He, you were like, Man, I could do the footwork within like five, ten minutes. And I'm like, right. Oh, dang, it's a new release <laughs> yeah. I learned. You know, yeah, what I mean? so you know, there there's things I was told in college, like that and, and for me, I was kind of guy, you know, I, I was good with my hands. Um, yeah. I didn't have the best footwork. I was good with my hands, uh, but I was physical. So a lot of guys would try to come up and try to press me. You know, they'll come and try to press me, you know, get in my face, whatever. Because in college, my playing weight is about like 170, right? Okay. So, okay. so, you know, average height, you know, average height, you know, 170. So I would I would say, you know, I don't have the footwork. So I wouldn't even mess with that. I would, one move, dip my shoulder, be physical and go, right? Stack and, and go, right? Um, but when you when you show me, okay, look, hey Steph, look, you know, come to balance, right? You know, it, it come to balance before you make your move, you know, come to balance before you, you make a decision and whatnot. It really kind of helped me like understand, hey, if I would have had this in my skill set, and then you know, I really assess the defensive back before I make a move, I man, I would have yep. I would have been a lot more effective as a receiver as opposed to you know uh, uh now so and, and that's just something that simple so young wide receivers if y'all watching this just something that simple that seth just said coming to balance on a release on a uh on a, on a press release coming to balance will let you read the db and see what he's going to do so you can judge your next move yeah something that simple and that right there can dictate a lot of the situation um for the rest of the route. Yeah, and, and I think that that's important. Like, look, to, you know, there were guys that were college guys, pro guys that were coming in and learning that when I when you went to the VA retreat in Virginia that were just learning that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Arizona, you, you're going back. Now, is Arizona, you're still going to be in Arizona or is Houston going to be your main spot? Oh, I'm going to be in Houston. Um, I'm definitely going to turn it up in Houston, but Arizona, I'll be back in Arizona for – uh, I want to say maybe, maybe like two to three months in the off season, and uh, get some solid work in with uh, a lot of the boys that I had out there. And um, but yeah, I'm gonna start setting up things in Houston, man. Houston, Houston got it. Yeah. Houston, and I got I got everything out here in Houston as well. So I still got the fields, and I still had a gym. So okay. Um, I can still do my thing. I know. Uh, uh, like I say, this is gonna be a hotbed. This is a real hotbed out here for for yeah. football talent. So what's your vision of chop? Like what, 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 what do you want chop to eventually grow into? What, um, like, like what, what's, what, how do you want to evolve? And then, you know, what's, what are some challenges that you faced as well too? kind of just throughout this whole process? To right now I'm facing a challenge of this heat. 
Hey, he went to Houston, man. He went to Houston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But that's good. No, but, uh, you're around, right? You feel me? It's hot out here, baby. It's yeah. muggy. Boy, but um, <laughs> but um, no, nah, my vision for chopping the field uh is very detailed, it's very uh it's very um big, mm -hmm. I wanna say. It's very big. Um without giving away too much, chopping the field training is gonna transfer to something bigger where I'm still helping the athletes. Yeah. Um and and uh I'll be able to help them long term. You know what I mean? Yeah. And still and still helping coach and train them up as well. Okay. But um You'll be good to see what Yeah, that but 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 I'll, I'll drop I'll drop all that news soon on everybody. Um but my vision for chopping the field is just to keep progressing, man. Like I tell my athletes, let's keep progressing. Let's keep getting better. Let's keep getting, let's keep getting better at something as a business that's chopping the field. I know I'm going to keep getting more athletes. I'm going to keep getting, uh, 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 opportunities to help and change, change players lives, set some new goals for them, have them reach them. Uh, I'm going to reach a lot of goals that I have for myself. And that right there is when I know chopping the field is on the right, right, right path. Yeah. Do you, let me ask uh, this question. We talk. We talk a lot. You know, we talk yeah. a lot about sports and whatnot. Um, who are some guys you like and you you watch right now in, in NFL and receiver? And then so, um, if you have any DBs that you like, um, but receiver, what's some guy? Who's some guys you like to watch right now? You think are good fundamentally that some of your players can learn from? Shoot, I like watching my boy. I train. I like watching Andy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah. So. Andy. That that's a uh, it's a great story. Talk talk to us a little about Andy. How you got connected with him? Because this off season and, and this off season you guys put in work, but then oh. preseason, you know, he went stupid in preseason too. Like oh, he went crazy. Yeah, talk to me about that relationship and 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 just uh just what Andy means to you. Um, Andy one is more it's more than just hey I train Andy and I'm his coach and um. We we go out and hit the field and I, that's all we do. No, it's more than that. Yeah. Um, that's a good friend of mine first. Mm -hmm. Um, and more than anything, I try to help him in his life, and that has helped his football game. Like a lot of people got to understand, like uh, yo, once you have the comp, if if someone takes your confidence, it doesn't matter how much skill you have. It doesn't matter how fast you are. Yeah, you won't be able to perform at the level you want to perform at. Right. So on a life lesson uh, scale, I help my guy with uh, getting his swagger and confidence back, baby, that he had when he was balling in college. Yeah, he you know out, what I'm saying. Was a four was a four three. He was a four three guy. Yeah, he came out running four three oh four two nine for the and got drafted high, and um and and you know. And that's exactly what he needed. We put in a lot of work this offseason far as technique and getting better and getting getting open on uh man man routes. Right, and, y'all y'all he was he was with you during the season too. He yeah, was, he was training with you during the season as well, too. Man, it was crazy. That, the, the only other person I really heard about doing that is like Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant, mm -hmm. you know, he had, he had a story about Kobe like training before games, like it's so important, like, you know, and lifting in season. So he was training in season and off season. You guys got after it. So, yeah, no, I mean, this is a, a guy that's a young man. That's a, a hard ass worker. Mm -hmm. That's tough on himself. And on top of that, he only wants to get better and better and better and better to prove to himself first and then prove to others. You right. know what I mean? Um, But man, like you say, bro, we was getting it in during the season. Um, every Monday we would we would go out there. Every Monday we would go hit the field and work a lot of release work, work a lot of uh, um, uh, uh, top of the route stuff, and and just a lot of things just to tighten up his skills. But you're right. During the season, a lot of guys ain't doing that. No, nah, they aren't. So this off season, this off season, the the the. The pressure that we came up with, now you, you got to listen to me right here. You got to listen to me. The stuff that we came up with for this young fella this offseason, 
was uh, second to none. Yeah. You know what I mean, though? Yeah. On a whole football level, it was second to none. Yeah, I from, watching the from, video, from, you know, he was, he was, you, you can tell, like, you know, when you see someone, you see someone's running angry, like running back, running angry, you can tell he was, he was some purpose behind his routes and his cuts and stuff. Like, like he felt like, like he, he was supposed to be out there. And this is just training. So, and, and, and that came from a demeanor of having always being on attack mode, always having ultra confidence in yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he went out to camp and proved everything that he wanted to prove. Not only to himself, but to the coaches and to the players. Yeah, it looked easy. Um, preseason looked easy for him. Preseason, those games preseason was very easy. I mean, he led the team in receiving yards every every game. Mm. Yeah, it, so, it, it looked real easy for him. Yeah, um, and and that and that's that. Like my guy went out there and balled. He wanted, you know, he asked for an opportunity. He got this opportunity. Now, as athletes, you got to shine. You're right. You know what I mean. You can't be knocking on the door like, yo, let me in, let me in. Hey, let me in, let me in. And then when they open the door, you ain't got nothing to say. Yeah. Yeah, and you got you got uh, uh, Sal, the guy Sal, and another one, Mike Moss, I think those guys were getting after it too. Uh, Man. Sal, they call him Swaggy Sal on, in Green Bay. They call him Swaggy Sal. I saw every time <laughs> on uh, the Green Bay page, it's him in the outfit. You know what I'm saying? So you got Swaggy Sal and then you got Mike Moss. So those two yeah, guys yeah. are after right? Yep, man. Uh, Swaggy Sal, I like Swaggy Sal. Yeah, I like that. I like that. That's like calling yes. Green Bay. I've seen some of the comments. You know, you feel me? Nah, Sal, man. I, I got to give it to Sal. He came to me. He reached out to me a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, coming out of college, coming out of Auburn, tight end, and he just wanted to polish his game. He said, "I know you'll be the right person for me." Right. And when today, when I say this is easily probably, he might be my best route runner. Okay. As a, and he's a tight end. Okay. And his route creativity, man. You know what? You know what Sal is very good at stopping when he want to stop, mm -hmm. and not panicking if uh, a DB is in a position where he needs to be. Okay. He doesn't panic. He know he has a lot of moves for a lot of different situations. Yeah. Kind of like Devonta Adams, he has, a, he has a catalog of catalog of moves, right? That he can uh, he yep. can use in different situations. Oh, he got a plethora of moves. A plethora. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, and Mike, man, Mike, 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 been killing it. Mike, uh, Mike, uh, just got accepted into the XFL draft. Okay. So big things for Mike Moss coming. Y'all yep. need to stay tuned because this is a a young man that's a dog, dog, dog. Okay, you know what I mean. Now, top five. Give me top five receivers in the NFL. Ooh, ooh. I, I won't. I won't put any pressure. No order. Just top five. I ain't never felt no pressure yet. Anyway, till I give it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, shoot. Route uh, as far as route runners or just just top five. Top five guys. You say that these are the best top five. Top five guys in the NFL. Top five guys in the NFL right now that I think gotta be. Um, well, Cooper Cup up there, he was balling. Cup, okay. Uh, Stefan Diggs. Diggs. Both I like. I like. I like. I like Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase. Okay. This. This is. These are fellas that I like. Uh. uh okay. Um. Um. Hold you got, on. You got Tay in there, Devontae Adams. Yeah, yeah, Devontae Adams for sure. You got one more. Devontae Adams for sure, and then. You know who I like to see get busy too, though, man. I like uh, I like I like uh, what's slim name on uh, thing. Keenan always been one of my favorites because he a route runner, but but I like Keenan, but, but 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 I don't know if he's in the top five right now. But that's your top five. Keenan in my top five for route running. Okay. Now, 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 like, like if you like a top five receiver, that's a different. You know what I mean? You that's got one different. more. Who do you got? One more. Damn, who I had in my head just now. Um, I got to think of the teams in the NFL. It ain't is it Julio? Is it? Uh, the, I'm thinking. NFC. I'll give you. I'll, I'll I'll give it Jefferson. Jefferson might be a oh, top yeah, five okay. guy. Jefferson. Okay, I like that. Yeah. So Jefferson, J Mo. Yeah. 
Jamar, uh, Tay, Cooper Cup, and Diggs. I like that. That's that's yeah. a, that's, a, that's a top five you can't argue with. No, 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 no. Um, top five route runners. Just rolling it. Top five route runners. You All right, Keenan. route runner. You say who? You got, you got Keenan in there, right? You mentioned. Got Keenan in there for sure. Yeah. Um, Keenan in there. I got a uh, Amari in there when he playing when they man. Yeah, Amari Cooper. Yep, I like yep. that. Yep, I got uh Tay when in Amari there again. Cooper, when Amari Cooper's awake, he's 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 unguardable. Yeah, when he locked in, <laughs> he's unguardable. Amari got to be feeling good about himself. Right. Yeah. Right. And 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 when he when he's I I, I think Amari Cooper is one of the best. If not, if if he's on it. You know, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm excited to see what he does with them with uh with the Cowboys. So, but uh, so, Coop, route, route, route runner, route running is Keenan, Amari, mm -hmm. Devontae, Devontae, Steph, Stephon, and you. I'll, and I'll throw this the boy in the slot in there, man. I'll throw uh uh Renfro in there. Okay. Yeah. I I, I that's not bad. I I, I like. I, I like Winthrow. He he's very uh, he's unorthodox. He's not flashy, but mm. but man, his his he, he's almost like uh, he's almost like Cooper Cup. He's not flashy with it. He gets the job. Nah, no, I don't, I don't even think it's Cooper Cup just because they white. No, 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 no. That's true. No, look, look, he, look, 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 look. He get open and get separation against a lot of DBs. He does, but it's not like fancy. It's not like he's. He's giving them everything, doing the crossovers. He's doing it because he's because he understands the game. He, yep. Like if, he, you, if you say, he, "Hey, look, I want you to, I want you to want to, I want you to run a whip off the off the off the off the wheel linebacker," he's yeah. gonna run that whip. It may not be, it may not be like the flashes, but man, he's gonna make that defense that 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 will go a different way. You know. So some of these routes he run look flashy to me. Okay. I'm watching. I'm watching Phil. I'm watching Phil. I mean, uh, I, we talking about that's the boy in Oakland, right? Yeah, Oakland. Yep, yep. Yeah, Play, yeah, 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 yeah. It's up. They call him third, third and win throw. Yep. Because third down, he's always he open. Slim can even go to the outside and get he people can. work. He can. I, I believe so. He, I, I, he can as well too. I think we just you know see him in the slot and all is losing the slot. We don't realize, and he's a lot. I think he's a lot bigger than we. I'm not sure how big he is. A lot bigger than. Um, People, people really, you know, see him as like Devontae. Yeah. Adams, I know Devontae Adams was that big as well too. Yeah, yeah I don't agree. So, um, before we close, we, we've had multiple conversations about Tom Brady, right? Oh, uh, yeah, Tom, yeah, yeah. Tom Brady, uh, how do you think he's going to do this year? What do he do every year? Go to the playoffs. Okay, so you think so, that, that that that's the height of his uh of high performance this year? Um. He has a great well, going to playoff, him, yeah. going going to the playoffs is big time already in itself. I mean, your team don't do that. My team barely do that. You know what I mean? Here we go. Uh, listen, I'm just letting, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm just, look, Billy. Look, Phil, listen. We 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 Philly this year. Get it out. I'm, get it out. Get it I'm out. being humble. I'm being humble about Philly this year. We'll see what happens. There's a there's okay. a lot there's a lot to figure out. Um, I really I really think that Smitty is is really. I like him. I think he's really, really underrated, and I, I was going to actually throw him in one of my top route runners. Man, because he's he's so smooth with it, and and, yeah. and and I think that you know, of course, he's going to be splitting cat splitting targets with uh with AJ Brown and Goddard. Um, yeah, I mean, you need, you need to. So, but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. So, I, I mean, so Tom Brady, you think you think another Super Bowl visit or just playoffs? Um. I think uh, Tom gonna have an exceptional year personally, okay. like statistically, right though. Um, and then I know they'll make the playoffs. Getting to the Super Bowl, most likely. I don't know if they'll win it again. I don't know if they'll win it. Though. Okay. But I think it. I think is more than any team on the NFC to me. Tampa Bay got a chance to make it to the Super Bowl yeah, for sure. I think, I think you know with that team you have you know you have three Hall of Fame well two you know right now you have two Hall of Fame receivers and then you have uh, yeah people be sleeping on Mike Evans for some yeah, reason a thousand yards every year in the league a thousand yards yeah I mean hell what yeah. I need to do yeah exactly I mean it's it's, it's just the team doesn't win you know and he's quiet yeah. he's really kind of quiet other than when he's going against Ramsey um, but he's quiet about it so. But cool, man. Hey, look, before we hop off, anything you want to say, anything you want to say to the 
uh, to the people watching. Um, this is our. This is actually my first one. I'm, I'm kind of starting off with bringing people on. I think it'd be great. Yeah. Some people that are close to me that uh, that uh, some of my friends and people that I think uh, be great to share their story. Um, anything you want to say to the uh, to the show? First of all, I want to say I'm happy to be on Check Me Podcast. You already know. You know what I mean. Hey, look, I'm happy to be here just talking football and type type do, dialoguing with my boy Seth about the game. Um, this is a very smart dude, fellas. As <laughs> far as studying the game, knowing the game, knowing what he's talking about with players. This dude, yo, he he knows his stuff. Um appreciate that. Thanks for having me on, bro. Hey, you the know. field, love to be on here anytime. And and anytime you got some open space for us, let me know. Hey, I'm coming right know, back, man. baby. Yeah, you already know. I'll probably, I'll probably, I, I might be actually breaking down some, uh, some routes and like you know from some games and stuff. We talk about how the, what they were thinking, how they're operating. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be great going season. So, but cool, man. All right, Dante. Yep. Hey, look, man. Hey. Appreciate you hopping on. Thank you again. Be easy. Keep training, man. I'll hit you up. All right, baby. Love you, life. All right, man. Love you too. Peace. All right.